guys, Tyler here. Welcome back to Opus Magnum, the game where you program extremely satisfying alchemy machines. If anything from the first video was confusing at all, I would highly recommend watching the tutorial video. This game only improves the more you learn about it. So now, the goal of this level is to turn these three reagents, combine them into the precision machine oil. But you may notice on the machine oil, there is an element that actually is not denoted in the reagents. That's because we gotta bring back our good friend, the Glyph of Projection. What it does is once lead goes in and Quicksilver goes in, the lead gets leveled up. And thanks to this handy chart, what I need is tin, and tin is one step above lead, so I only need one Quicksilver in order to get it. So in order to create this nice line-shaped bond, I'm gonna probably need two regular glyphs of bonding. Then I'll put the glyph of projection here. Put my lead here. Actually, a quicksilver here. Then I'll see if I can get away with water here, but it might be dicey. So the first thing I would like to have are the arms for the lead. Yes, I did say arms, because we're also optimizing for speed. At least slightly. Some multiple arms for quicksilver. And then I only want one arm for the water. I've been thinking about it while talking. I think I also want a track to be right under it. This arm three is actually going to be on a track because I need it out of the way. I was thinking it was important to also have an arm here, and you'll see why. So the first thing needs to happen, I need to have arm one pick up a lead, rotate clockwise, drop it off in return. At the same time, I'll have... Let's go arm three, pick up a quicksilver, rotate clockwise, drop it in return. And you may think arm five should pick up the water, rotate it, and move, but not yet. Because arm six is going to have to pick up the lead, I think now? Rotate clockwise and drop it? So then I was thinking about timing arm five to pick up the water, rotate clockwise, and then travel along the track. I guess I could do it twice and then drop in a return. So let's not forget uh, two ticks after I pick up the first lead and quicksilver, I can pick up another lead and quicksilver. So arm two will pick up this lead. It'll rotate counterclockwise and then drop and repeat. And arm four will pick up the quicksilver, extend out and drop and repeat. Now arm two actually isn't gonna just rotate once, it's gonna rotate twice just so we can get to the second bonded glyph. And well, frankly, as long as there's no collisions, this should work. I programmed arm three wrong. It's <laughs> supposed to go along the track, not rotate. Whoops, how about now? Okay, it almost works, except this has to be over one. Send it. There you go. All right, I ironed out the kinks. Now, I think I can go faster. I'm pretty sure there's some inefficiency here. In fact, I want the fastest possible time, which I definitely have not gotten, is at least 20 cycles faster. So the way to get the fastest possible time is to be picking up the materials as quickly as possible. And right now I'm a little slow in the lead and quicksilver department, so I think, or at least the lead department, so an arm seven I think will help here. It's actually gonna serve a very similar purpose to arm six. It's gonna pick up the second lead, extend out, and drop and repeat. And now arm two can only need to rotate once and then go back. But I think the real thing that's actually slowing this down is arm five. So what if I had arm seven do a little bit more work? What if I had it here and had it expand twice and then drop, bringing it all the way to its goal? And then arm one would have to become a piston arm with similar code except expanding and dropping, which will look something like this. And then arm five will just need to be fixed. So the track is not as long and it only goes along it once before dropping. See if this helps. Damn it, wrong button, there we go. I accidentally was programmed number one. Did I do track seven? Oh my God, yeah, yeah, okay. Extend it, not move along a track. What am I thinking? This should work for sure. Now it's faster, but is it fast enough? It's not even close to fast enough. Now in programming, each arm has to wait the duration of the slowest arm before it can repeat its cycle again. And the slowest arm takes six steps. So how do you make it that the lowest arm takes four steps? 
So that means breaking up arms five and seven into shorter cycles. So I'm gonna move the water to here and have arm five stay there, add in a piston arm. This one's gonna become the real arm five. And what this'll do, it'll pick up the water, push it out, drop and repeat. Arm six will then pick up the combined water and lead. I guess I could actually grab it by the lead if it wanted to. Move along the track and drop and repeat. And now for arm eight. I think I'm gonna have to break up arm eight's roll into two smaller rolls. Arm eight's roll is just gonna push it forward once. And then arm nine is gonna pick it up move it along the track, drop and repeat. So now everything has only four steps. This should be a lot faster. Oh, a little timing error, like that, and send it. So certainly a lot faster, but could still be faster, even if by a couple steps. And the issue is this, the final product should move as fast as possible. Now, I know what you're saying, aren't they all moving as fast as possible? Well, no. Let's go to the end to show you what I mean. All right, so here, this is the fifth product going in. So now this is the sixth one being made. I've just created the tin, the tin moves, and then it waits, and then it goes in. That waiting step slows you down. Now, the way I like to do that is by having a dedicated final product arm and that will just be an arm that picks up the lead moves it to the glyph of projection and then moves it twice to get to the product all in one swoop and then what you just do with the code there's a, a thing that basically just repeats all the previous instructions and you can do that to these just again and again i guess actually repeating once is really all you need but you have to make sure then if 10 is going to do anything that needs to get out of the way of the other dudes doing things. So what does that mean? Well, the final lead pickup at the beginning would normally be done by arm number two. So this just isn't gonna work this time. At the time that would have happened, I will instead have arm 10 pick up and then move along the track three times, drop and repeat. That also means arm eight won't be doing anything the second time because arm 10 will be doing it, and then arm 9 also won't be doing anything the second time, because arm 10 will be doing it. Will it work? I don't know. Let's find out. No, it's a little too fast. I was kind of curious about that. That means everything else needs to speed up. Basically, arms 5 and 6 need to speed up just by one tick. Uh, issue being they're going to cause a collision, aren't they? Yeah, they are. <sighs> okay. The way I see this working is building it from the ground up with arm 10 in mind. So I'll quickly do that and show you guys what I've made. After a lot of work, I was able to construct this absolute beauty. It's so small, but yet it's efficient. Let me break this down. Arm number one is solely responsible for taking the lead to the glyph of projection. Arms number two and three are on this triangle track and they are functionally the same as arm 10 from the previous build. We grab lead, bring it to the glyph of projection by moving along the track, rotating to bring it to its first glyph of bonding, and then further moving along the track brings it to its goal where it is dropped. And both of these arms do the same thing as they rotate around. Arms four and five are solely responsible for Quicksilver. A five is a piston just because I wanted to optimize for area after speed and not cost. Otherwise, there would have been just the cheap arm right here. Arm six is responsible for getting arm one's lead, or now tin, to move over here to the other glyph of bonding. And arm seven and eight are solely responsible for the water. Bonding it, bring it to the second bonding, dropping, repeating. So here's what it looks like. And it, it just works wonderfully and so fast. Faster than I thought. I actually thought the ceiling was 28, but no, it's 27 cycles. Clearly, there must have been some miscounting somewhere along the way, but an area of 25, which is small as I could get given the fastest possible cycles. 
I'll have to optimize for area at some point, but I think it's more fun to optimize for area after getting maximum cycles. It's so like, I got the most efficient factory possible, now how can I cram it into a tiny space? And god, I mean, this thing is so sick to look at. It's a miracle there's no collisions, to be honest. The geometry is just mwah, perfect. Let's take on another uh, challenge. Next up is a health tonic. Involves combining water with two instances of Vitae. Well, to do this, give me some unconventional bonding. Probably, again, just two glyphs of bonding. I believe it'll be safe here. I don't know where I want this yet. But I figure if I have the Vitae there, I can have two longer arms to bring it to here and here for bonding, respectively. I almost want to try some track strategy here. Why well, grab this and slide it along the track, and then maybe rotate it when I want to finish it off. So I believe four arms might just be all I need. Arms one and two are going to have to be working maximum overdrive here. But yeah, pick, arm one, pick it up, rotate counterclockwise, drop or repeat. Arm two, I have to wait, pick it up, rotate clockwise, repeat. Same time, R3 will pick it up, go towards plus, go towards plus, go towards plus, pivot counterclockwise, drop, go towards plus, go towards plus. Now, this is eight. So I believe if I repeat each of one and two twice, that's also eight. So it's consistency. I believe four will be identical to three, which may look like this but the move instructions are gonna have to actually be at the end here. Does this work? Is this this fast? This... No, it's not. Oh, yeah, yeah, I did three wrong. Cannot go as fast as I would like. I see, it's at this step that it's gonna have to wait. I also totally miscalculated both of these. Does this work now? No, it collides. Hold on, this is an easy fix then, I could just move the, well, move some of this stuff around because I think this lines up appropriately. It almost lines up appropriately. Oh, uh, but I can't have the goal be here. Well, there's one dumb way to fix it. I can replace the three with this new four, which is a six part arm. Haven't even used it before. But it does work for this scenario, and also, before, you guessed it has to be replaced by five. It's basically the same deal, and the, the benefits of these is that they, don't, they can rotate without, like, losing time. So you can go at maximum speed through all that. Now, if I want, I could try to optimize for area. This would be an interesting one, actually, with how fat it is. Just gotta clear everything out, so I think I'm gonna live com this one. I gotta think about space efficiency here. Maybe like this? So let me just go bit by bit here. First thing that happens, arm three picks up the start, pushes it out. At the same time, arm one picks up its thing, rotates it counterclockwise, drops and repeats. The second arm picks up Vitae, rotates it clockwise, drops and repeats. And at the time it drops, arm three can pull it back in. So I would want to pivot it in one direction. Then four would have to be here. And it feels like I'd start getting a little bit too much area. Grab and drop, extend it, drop and repeat. Does this even work for starters? No, there is a collision. Okay, but there probably won't be a collision like if it rotates the other way pivots the other way. And then this is going on down below. This might be better for area, for all I know. Move this in two different directions at once. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, can I pull this back one? Or is it not gonna let me? No. Okay, so this has to be here, so I have to include a waiting step so it doesn't try to yoink it in two ways at once. So that's an area of 20, but it feels kind of big still. Well, I beat all my friends, but it looks like on the histogram people got below 20. Maybe got 18, 19? 
The only other thing I can think of is maybe some sort of single arm solution. Eh, hell, I'll try it. So I pick up the thing, rotate it clockwise, drop, extend twice to grab the Vite, grab it, bring it in, drop, bring in the arm, rotate counterclockwise, grab the water, rotate clockwise, drop, grab the Vite, bring it back in, drop, rotate clockwise, extend, drop, and repeat. I mean, it's not gonna fail, I just don't know how it's gonna do area-wise. So far, not so great. Oh, okay, I missed the step somewhere. I needed to bring the arm first, and then grab, duh. Although, was the area looking bad? I think it was. Oh, it's 18! Maybe that's really good. Okay, yeah, it puts me in the correct histogram bar. For all I know, this is the best area. Uh, this is not as easy to mathematically prove as cycles, though. Maybe this is better? I guess I want to try. Okay, I took a fresh file to not override the other one. I want to see if this happens to work. Seventeen? It got better! Hooray! <laughs> oh, this is certainly the best I can do. I am not improving on this. 17 area. This was a neat one to optimize. A unique challenge. If anyone got 16, let me know. I would be shocked if 15 were possible, though. 17 feels pretty good. I would like to thank you all for watching. Hope you guys enjoy these optimizations. I'll see you guys all in the next Opus Magnum video. Hope you all have a wonderful day and peace.